today. I'm going to be talking about the uh, Rim Country Lakes, and this is dedicated to the memory of Jack Hoke. If you didn't know already, Jack Pope passed away earlier last on the 17th, of the 7th of uh, April, last month. Um, I actually had a chance to talk to Jack not that long ago, and I tried calling his house, and his son answered, and uh, that's how I found out. But uh, he, he had given me permission to videotape his presentations and to copy his material. So some of the slides you're going to see are right from Jack himself. All right. We're going to start off with the lakes we're going to cover. These are the six lakes on the Muggian Rim, um, which is actually the southern edge of the Colorado Plateau, geologically. Um, and I couldn't get no lake on this map. Pardon my problem there. Um, we're going to start off with the Black Canyon Lake on the right-hand side and then move from right to left, kind of, but not totally. The, uh, if you stood on the edge of the, the uh, Muggion Rim and looked out, you'd be looking straight down about 1,000 feet before it starts blooming away from you down below. And uh, it's, it's quite a, a, a climb to get up there, as many of you have already seen. Uh, the six lakes were actually built by Arizona Game and Fish uh, starting in the 1950s, I think 1955 is when they started, and uh, they were built strictly for recreation and fishing. They are not designed to be reservoirs to hold uh, water for any irrigation of any kind. Um, the easternmost lake being Black Canyon, let's start there. To get up to any of these lakes, you want to go into Payson and then take a right uh, on the 260, heading east. And uh, there's a McDonald's on the right-hand side. It's a pretty prominent um, uh, intersection, real easy to see. Uh, and all the, all the rim lakes can be uh, reached from there, or you can come up from uh, the uh, Camp Verde area on the 260, but it, it's a lot further to go. Um, you head east until you head towards Heber, at the top of the hill is this uh, Sitgraves National Forest sign. And uh, just past that is the sign that says you can go left to Woods Canyon or straight ahead towards Heber. And I uh, circled the, the comfort zone on the bottom right. There's a, uh, a station there with a porta potty, or not, not porta potty, it's a regular bathroom. And it's uh, after the drive up there, it's a rather convenient stop to make. All right. Uh, just past mile mark, as you're headed towards Heber, you'll go through Forest Lakes, and then a little further, you'll come across this mile marker 291. And, oh, you can see my arrow. And then if you go down a little further, there's a sign that talks about Black Canyon Lake to go to the right. And as you go that way, you've got the Rim Road, which is the 300 road. It follows the Muggion Rim for a long, long ways. And uh, you take it straight ahead for six miles towards Black Canyon Lake turnoff. And then and there's another turn onto the 86. And Forest Road 86 will take you three miles into the lake itself. Now there is, uh, during the Rodeo Chedeskai fire, there's a lot of timber burned in that area and it's starting to rot. And so they don't allow any overnight camping there right now. And uh, so all of these matchsticks ready to go up in flames, they say they are rotting. And so be very careful where you park. Uh, don't park anywhere. You can have some of those dead trees fall on your, your car. They have this, uh, I think Jack told us that that was a $50,000 potty, but uh, I don't know if that's true. And uh, just beyond it, down this parking area, there's actually a new boat launch area with a dock. Uh, last time I was there it was a real neat area to enter into the water and uh, take your float tube from there. And as you're looking up the lake at Black Canyon, there's the dam. 
uh, I actually walked about, oh, maybe a quarter mile up the shoreline before I got my float tube in the water because I wanted to fish by the dam. Um, Jack had said that there are largemouth bass in there. And sure enough, I went up to this shelf area here to the left of the dam, and it's about 14 feet deep, and largemouth bass are really in there. And I was using a uh, olive woolly booker, and the bass were just really, really cooperative. So it's a great place to fish. The, the bass were not put in there by game and fish, but they were put in there um, illegally. Someone took a bucket of bass. They like bass, and so they put them in this lake with trout. Well, when these bass get big enough, the trout are like candy bars to them. And so uh, the bass will feed on those trout. And in fact, if they get a chance to, they'll grow up to be quite large. The bass I caught in there were about two pounders, which were really fun on a fly rod. And here's a, another shot. This is the road down at the bottom here that leads into uh, the lake. And this is the parking and area. And this is the, the uh, boat launch right there. Um, the dam is up this way. I actually walked up until I was right about here, and I carried my chair, put on my waders, put out the flock tube, and I, I floated across and, and fished along this shelf over here. Um, really good fishing. Now, if you fish along here, you're actually fishing where a lot of other people go to with their bait and fish. But the minute you paddle across to this side of the lake, you can fish this shoreline and virtually nobody has fished it. And so it's a good place to get into the trout. Um, I was coming back this way. Instead of pulling out here, I decided to, to paddle down this way all the way down. And I got hit by trout all along this edge anyway. Uh, it's a remote enough lake that they don't stock it a lot. I think they hit it with three times. Um, let's see. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, They'll, it gets stocked three times from April until June, heavily stocked, and then they don't stock it anymore for the summer. And it'll be the next year again before they stock it again. Um, it's a great lake, and the average depth out in the middle is about 40 feet. Excuse me. Allergies. Now, the next lake is one you would have gone past as you drove in on the 260. Here's uh, Willow Springs, and this is the 260 going down towards Black Canyon. But the Willow Springs is what I would talk about next. Um, is It's the second largest lake as we move west, uh, built in 1967, and it usually is open any time of the year as long as there's an open road that goes back in over here. Here it is right here, I'm sorry. This road is uh, paved all the way to the lake, and there's a boat launch there and a dock. And uh, I've never seen it closed except when there's heavy, heavy snow that closes it off. Um, <clears throat> it comes in about one mile after you hit the top of the rim. You come up here, and you go straight ahead, and your road, this is the road that goes back towards Woods Canyon. This road towards Heber is where you go. And it's about a mile from here to here, and then you cut in. Uh, they don't have any camping there, uh, but they have signs that tell you where you can camp. Um, here's the signs as you get to the top of the road, the one you saw before. And then this is, if you watch for it, because it comes up really quickly. And then as you go in, here's that boat launch and the dock that's there. Uh, I've done classes on the left-hand side over here where there's actually uh, – fairly flat rock that goes out. I had uh, students had spinal injuries and they were able to get their wheelchairs down to the edge of the lake and fish over there. And the same thing can occur, occur over on the right-hand side. There's some little points that go out. Uh, they don't allow anybody to stay here because the boats are coming in and out. Um, but there are fish in there. Um, there's additional access over, let me see if I can back up. Over here, right here, there's a road that goes out onto this peninsula to what's called Sardine Point. Uh, there's a parking area right here, 
And when you get out there, uh, you can walk down to the shoreline, but it's a little bit steep. You have to be real careful. I've actually walked out to this point and fish waiting and caught some fish, some bass out there. Um, and I think Phil has fished out there, if I'm not mistaken, and he's caught um, tiger trout out as well. Um, but down this whole line here from the boat launch, all along here, this can be really good fishing in here. Right about here, I had about uh, 50 small largemouth bass were following me around as I was float tubing through there. I thought I was going to scare them away. They just followed me. I must have been their little shade that they wanted to follow. And this is that road that leads in there. And again, no overnight camping. Uh, and this is the point where you park and then you walk down to the water from there. And this is what you really want to find if you can. These are fish coming up to feed on the surface. And that, that, is, can, that can be really fun. Um, top water in here, I would suggest throwing a parachute atoms, um, maybe a humpy. Something fairly small, though. You don't want to go large. But they, they are just really thick in here at times. And there, you'll also find sunfish, largemouth bass, again, illegally stocked in here. Um, and I've been told there's crappie in there, but I've never seen one. And that doesn't mean they're not there. It just means I haven't had one myself. And again, you know, I've not fished down this wall here. I have fished over we're in this area, but it can be a tough walk, um, so you have to be really careful. Okay, when you get to the top, here's that port, that real fine sign that they put up here. Instead of going towards Heber, you make a left here, and you go towards Woods Canyon, and you follow a, a uh, paved road that goes about three miles in here, and after you get to that, that paved road ending, it becomes dirt road on the 300 road. Again, the, this is the rim road. <clears throat> You'll come to a dirt turn off to the right, and it will take you into the, the uh, Woods Canyon area. Right here, they actually have a store, and uh, they, they can rent you boats there. They have uh, sodas for sale. They have bait for sale, um, just all kinds. Of, it, and there's a, there's a Marine that runs the boat rental place and he's the guy that gives us boats a couple times a year to take out on the uh, healing waters trips so i've actually gone in there and rented a boat just because he supports us uh really nice now the last time i was at this lake i was fishing around this area and around over on the other side here with a float tube and I, that's where i caught my uh tiger trout and they were just underneath the, the flotation here. So casting near some structure like this can really be productive. Um, <clears throat> this was the first one that was built, Woods Canyon. And it was built starting in 1955, and they, they finished it in 1956. Um, due to its high use, this is uh, such a popular lake that gets about 40% of all the stockings that Game and Fish puts trout in these lakes. Um, let's see. They stock it. The regular starting starts uh, in April, and it goes every other week until May and June. And then it's every week during the summer. So they stock it with trout every, every week to try and keep up with the demand. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Allergies. Um, looking across from the, the boat launch, down to the right, there's a nice cove to the left of the dam that I've fished a lot. Uh, this shoreline here, I've caught a lot of trout along there. And if you look down to the left from the boat launch, there's a... a a fork that goes back this way and a fork that goes back this way. Um, I have a buddy that actually took his, um, a rope of some kind he had with him and he tied up to this tree right here. And he said he was catching a lot of fish right there. So if you go to the left and you find this, this, it's always there. 
just fish anywhere along this shoreline or down along this way, and there's a lot of fish just congregate in that area. This used to be one of Jack's favorite places to go. It's down in here, and he used a soft hackle pheasant tail to catch his fish down there. For me, I like using an olive woolly bugger in this whole lake, uh, and it, it's done well. But I usually use nothing bigger than a 10, a 12 or a 15 for my flies. Um, here's Jack. He was fishing. He actually got out and waited. Uh, something you have to watch out for in this lake, though, is there's a lot of stumps that stick up. And so when you rent a boat, they want you to be very careful and stay at least 20 feet or 20 yards away from the shoreline because you can bang into rocks. As you can see oh. underneath, hmm? as you see underneath here, there's rocks right near the surface um, and snags of all kinds that can, can give you trouble. Um, let's see again Woods Canyon if you fish this shoreline there can be a lot of fish in there um, I like this cove the first cove I showed you but right here last year a few of us were just catching fish after fish through this whole area and uh, even gross, growing down this middle of the lake at times the, the fish will be coming up. I use nothing but floating line. A lot of guys like to go down deeper. Uh, I like to fish with a floating line, and, and uh, I don't use a strike indicator. I like to feel the take of the fish. But, uh, yeah, there was a lot of fish down here. If I remember right, Pledger was fishing down in this cove, and he even caught some nice uh, uh, tiger trout down in there, too. So, this was a good area to catch tiger trout for the last couple of years. Now, as we're moving further north and east, I'm sorry, west, uh, you come to Chevron Lake. And this is the only of the lakes that I have personally not fished. Um, <clears throat> if you follow the directions that they give you um, and go to Chevron Lake and all that, uh, it's going to take you to a dead end like this. And you walk down from this spot on that kind of gravel for a mile to get down to the water. Uh, I have, I've been told that it's like walking 10 miles back out of there because it's all uphill. And I can't imagine carrying anything with you if you came back up. And this lake is so difficult with shoreline being steep and not accessible that you have to float to this lake. There's, there's no other way to, to fish it. Um, now, if you take the 119, well, that would be, <clears throat> yeah, the 119 road can give you some other access, but you really want to think about using a four-wheel drive to go in on it. Uh, and then you take the 80 to the end. And there's a steep wall, as you can see. They have switchbacks going down to Chevron. I don't know about you, but that does not appeal to me a whole lot. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, uh, as I said, this is one I've not fished, but, but Jack used to fish it. And this is some of the shoreline. You might be able to crawl along some of this, but you sure couldn't fish it very well. And uh, Jack said that they stock it up on this end, but the fish all come, migrate down here. A lot of the water that moves on the Mugion Rim moves north and comes in on this section down here. And so that's where you want to fish. The fish will travel all the way down to where the water's coming in. And that's the place to fish down here. The better way to get there, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I already showed you the better way to get there. <laughs> the, the next lake we're going to talk about is Bear Canyon. Now, this is also on that rim road from Woods Canyon. Just go past the Woods Canyon turnoff on the 300 road until you get to the 89 road. And then you follow that in, and it takes you and dumps you up in this area up here. And again, this is a tough, steep walk down to the water. And I personally uh, have fish down in here. And I have yet to go in on, on Jack's secret access that I'm going to show you the secret way to get in there. But uh, the fish here, again, migrate down to the south end of the lake where the water comes in from. And they, they tend to be down in this area down here where I'm circling. Now, 
Here's another view looking north. I'm talking about this is the parking lot, and you do walk down a little ways, but it's not a horrible route uh, compared to the other. Um, Bear Canyon Lake turn off, and that's this is that upper section where you, you don't want to walk in from, although I have. I had a class of students that have walked in right there and did catch fish. But if as you're going down the road, instead of going all the way down, out to the launch I just told you about, just past this Forest Service fire tower, there's a little road to the coast to the right, the 208. And if you take that road, and it's uh, stay out, it's a decent little road. It's 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 not one of those you want to take a Chevette down, but it is a road that is much more convenient. And you take it to the end and go and park here. And then you have a decent little trail that walks you down to the lake. Uh, and again, there's no camping in this area. And the trail can be a little rocky. You have to be real careful going through some of this, but it's decent. And if you get a little off center, look for these blue diamonds on the trees, and they will show you where to go next. So you walk to this spot here, and you'll see the next blue diamond to make it to. And this is what you get down to. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the, the show, the slides, Jack was holding about a 30-inch trout in his hands. Jack caught that trout right over here. And he was using a little caddis fly, about a size 16 caddis fly on the surface. Um, let's see. Um, All uh, right. And then there's some more shots here of the same lake. Uh, this is uh, George Abernathy, our friend from uh, fishing down at the golf course. And George was a good friend of Jack's. And George was in there with Jack when he caught that nice fish. But this is a gorgeous, gorgeous fall hangout to go fishing in. Now, the next lake that you come to is Noel Lake. But if you remember at the beginning of the show, it's way over to the west from everything else. Um, and getting there, <clears throat> you're on the Rim Road, you can take the Highway 260. Or you can get in there from Highway 260 or Highway 87. Um, it depends on which part of the road the graders have gone down last. I've gone in there both ways. And uh, I look to see if there's been a grader down the road uh, to try and give me a decision as to which way to go. But it can be rough road either way going on the 300 here. And you come to a sign that says no lake four and a half miles off of that road. And this is the dam when you get to the no lake. Um, and then over to the right of the dam is a boat launch right here. Um, <clears throat> It's one of those lakes you don't get a lot of people coming to because it's just a little bit of a drive. But Noel Lake can be a really productive lake if you go down uh, across from the boat launch. There's a little cove over here. And that cove gets a lot of fish into it. And then the fish migrate. This is that cove. And fishing all along through here can be really productive. And then if you look down lake to the right, there's a point. And this is like a an island, and that's the knoll that the lake is named after. And if you go down the right-hand side down here, you'll actually find fish will be in that area. This is the way they migrate in, at Knoll Lake is down this way. And uh, again, that is one heck of a fish. Mm -hmm. So I, I know I went through it a little bit quick, but from my perspective, I think fishing with uh, olive woolly bugger about a size 12, 10 or 12, is the best to fish in any of these lakes. Um, but I have caught them on midges. Uh, something you may want to do is I took a alligator clip, a roach clip, as you were, and I put a piece of lead on the end of it. 
and I'll pinch that piece of lead or that clip onto my fly and I will drop it straight down and then I'll find out how deep the water is. I'll set my, my uh, strike indicator a uh, foot above that or below that so it comes up and then uh, pull up your, your, uh, your clip, unclip it from your fly and start fishing with it. A midge down there, a zebra midge is a great way to go. Um, fished about a foot off the bottom uh, but golly, I sure, I sure appreciate having a, uh, a surface or just under the surface bite. You know, that if you're fishing these lakes, you're going to see ospreys, you're going to see gold, uh, <clears throat> bald eagles. And uh, some of these lakes will actually have sections closed off if there's a nesting pair of bald eagles. You have to look for that. Some of the other things is if you're going to fish at... Um, Chevlon Lake, the really deep down in there one, uh, it, you're only allowed to bring out two trout. I don't know if you'd want to carry more than two trout out of there. And you're only allowed to use um, artificial fly or artificial lure. They don't allow bait fishing in there at all. Um, that spot where it's a one mile walk down in and 10 miles back out, people used to leave their boats down there for other people to use. And the Forest Service didn't like that, so they hauled them out of there. So uh, if you're going to fish Chevlon, you're going to need a float tube. And uh, But as you saw with George in that one picture, you, you don't need to have a float tube to fish at Bear Canyon, and that can be really productive in there. Um, the only time I fish Knoll, I used to take a canoe in there, and that was okay fishing. But a lot of these lakes are in the bottom of canyons. You have to watch out for the wind coming through and uh, can be, make it really tough. Do I have any questions? Yeah, I've got one, Bill. Yeah. It's Phil. Um, I think they changed a, a limit on trout there to four now. That is, is correct. That state, re state reg from six to four, right? That is correct. Yeah. A lot of other lakes have other limits. Um, some lakes you're only allowed to take one or two. Some you're not allowed to take out any at all. Becker right. Lake is like that by Springerville. Nope. You can't, right. can't allow, you're not allowed to keep any. But I think our state license is good for four max now. Yes, that is correct. Unless you're over in the Colorado River. And I haven't looked there, but it used to be your limit there was 10 trout. Hey, on, on that Willow Springs, that point I went to was off that trailhead, which is just prior to that road at Sardine Point. Okay, let me get there. And it's a, right here. Well, no, prior to that, see this peninsula there on the, just to the left of it? This one? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that's a mile from that point to the road, and there's a trailhead there. Okay. You can fish all on the right, and I caught a eight inch in diameter sunfish just there to the left in that wow. little arm, that little finger there last year. Down in here. Right, right off the bank. A lot of guys do park right here and walk in, like you're saying. Yeah, I've done that, and it's it's not it's easy hiking, and you can get right on the water shortly after leaving the lot there uh -huh. and hike along the shoreline that's pretty right. good and uh yeah that's 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 my tip that's great <laughs> yeah well, the, the other thing bill is that is there a uh, there's camping at no lake uh both in a campground there yes there's, there's that's a, true uh, on trim that's nice true campground. And if it gets overloaded or it gets filled up, if you before you get down that road, there's some dispersed camping. We used to take yeah. up the scouts up there. And right. It's uh, dispersed camping. Absolutely. Yeah. And the area, yeah. the area around that uh, launch ramp is uh, not graded, but it's not too bad to walk on or to fish for sure. Yeah, and the same thing with Willow Springs. Over here along the shoreline, you have to be a little careful, but it's fairly level. Um, it's a shallow grade down to the water. Um, this spot right here, I've done really well in. And this uh, last time I was up there this year, I went down to this point here, 
And just around the corner where I started to see the dam, and I caught fish right here. And they were really nice trout right here. And I irritated a young couple who were catching nothing with their power bait. So. <laughs> <laughs> Willow Springs right now is down roughly 10 or 12 feet from where it was in the fall. Right. It's really shallow. I was quiet as I've seen this group in a long time. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I would mention also, Bill, at uh, Woods Canyon, there are two campgrounds. Yes. Uh, one is right down by the dam, and it's called the Dam Campground. Uh, I thought it was a spillway campground. No way. Well, I took a little liberty there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is called spillway, but I just couldn't resist, you know. Um that one is hard to get into. Uh, it's very popular. Uh, the other one that's a little bit further from the lake itself is a very large campground. I think there's like over 100 sites in it. And you can get uh, nice accommodations in there. The sites are big. Um, either one, when you make the reservation through uh, reservations.gov, yeah. uh, if you have a senior pass, for the national parks. It is recognized at, um, at Woods Canyon. So it means your camping fees are one half of the going rate. Oh, nice. So that helps. Uh, and normally they're, they're pretty cheap. That uh, I think $27 a night, uh, no hookups, but uh, at half that rate is pretty hard to beat because they are paved uh, roads going in there. Uh, generators are allowed, hours are restricted, but uh, you can get down to the lake and um, it's a really nice, cool spot. Yeah. As, as far as parking and fishing uh, at w Woods Canyon, if you park by the store or down below the store towards where the boat launch is, yep. uh, don't take up any of those boat trailer parking spaces, but the other ones you don't have to pay par to park. Whereas if you go by the spillway, you have to pay to park in there. Yep. Yeah. I've had good success, as a matter of fact, uh, fishing right at the dam. Right I have too. Right off of the uh, spillway. And yes. As a matter of fact, one of the classes that I took way back when, which was a, a Corvus 101 class. Okay. Uh, on the water uh, program for that was right at the dam at Woods Canyon. And that oh. was given by uh, Cinda Howard. And uh, Jack was supposed to join us for that day, but they put him to work in the store instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but everybody that went on that uh, caught a couple of fish right from shore, didn't even get their yep. feet wet. Uh, yep. It worked out real well right by the dam. It was yeah. about this time of year. So that's a trip that you can make in a day. Also. Well, and you can stand on the dam and see the fish coming up, feeding on the surface. And the only problem with fishing on the dam is you have to use what I call a steeple cast, where you go straight up behind you and then out. Uh, otherwise, you're going to hit brush, you're going to hit rocks, and uh, you lose a lot of flies there if you're not careful. Yep. That's if you true. walk a little bit, go ahead. Yeah, that's very true. And I, uh, as you can see there in the picture, right on the left hand side of the dam, there is a, almost a little beachy area there. But again, it's, yes. uh, it's steep. So roll casting, work your roll cast yep. and, uh, and it works real well. Bill, okay, we're talking about Woods Canyon? Yes. Okay, if you go across the dam to this point right here, yes, people very fish there good. all the time. That's a very productive spot. And the fish just surface all over here at times. Yep. Yeah, the that thing that is, uh, uh, trail can be a little rough on that end. Uh, yeah. But if you yeah. up into that little finger that's above where your cursor is there, up and to the right, if you up in here. all the way back up in there, yep, that can be productive also. Yeah. Yep. 
And I've done a lot of fish along this shoreline too. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I, and the last time I fished that area, there were signs up because there was an eagle's nest in the area. Ah. And they didn't want anybody out of the water um, yeah. and up on that bank. Now, if you have wind blowing across from this way, using a hopper dropper through here, when you hear the cicadas in the tree can be extremely productive. Yep. Yeah, good call. Bill? Yeah. One note, if uh, we ever get rain again in Arizona. Oh, yeah. Uh, you need to do this in the morning. Uh, <laughs> the thunderstorms come up in the afternoon and they blow over the they blow over the rim and you can get uh, pretty dramatic thunderstorm activity. Oh, that's true. I was checking I was checking the website and the the water at uh, Bear Canyon, no, not Bear Canyon, Black Canyon right now is already up to 60 degrees. Wow. Yikes. Really? Yeah, so the the fish can especially the bass are going to start becoming very active up there. Um and it, I was talking to some guys that were at Woods Canyon this yesterday, and they caught a lot of sunfish. They were having tri trouble finding uh, trout, but there were a lot of sunfish in there. I think I was I was in there with Tony. I was in there with Tony a year and a half ago, and the the sunfish were thick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that trail still open around Woods Canyon, Bill? Last I yes. heard. That's a, about a five mile um, hike. That's not a hard hike, but you can get all the way around the lake. Yeah. yeah. Yep. yep. That, is that is true. But that log that I was log showing you, this log, this log right where did the log go? There? <laughs> okay. That is right here in the lake mm -hmm. yep. and I had a buddy that's the place my buddy of mine was two weeks ago and just not nailed the trout like crazy stick up good woolly buggers again there uh oh. actually he was throwing a uh, San Juan worm that was wiggling oh okay oh okay a live, a, a live San Juan worm. Oh, a <laughs> real San Juan worm. <laughs> Not a squiggle worm. Yeah, he was catching that, that and, and uh, power bait. Yeah, boo hoo. Boo hoo. But he's, but he's a good fly fisherman too, but he had his dad out and they wanted some success. Uh -huh. Yeah. His dad's going through some cancer treatments right now and anything you can do to have some success with that guy. I fished with him at uh, Payson, Green Valley Lakes, and he was nailing the, sun, the sunfish. Well, the, my, his son and I were fly fishing, and he didn't say anything. He was just sitting over there grinning like he had. <laughs> Smart man. Yeah. Good. But there's, you know, these are easy access lakes. Uh, for the most part, but Chevalon excluded. But if you follow some of the directions I showed here, uh, there are ways to get in to make your, your uh, difficulty a lot less. Mm. Good. Fish the aspens at Bear Canyon. You can okay. The bottom yep. of that trail, look to yes. your left, and there's a whole yes. stand of aspens. Yes. Fish along there is a good spot. And, and to the left of them, yes. Uh-huh. So yeah. I don't know. Somebody that's on here has actually used some of those pistol peats. I don't know if that's legal either. <laughs> that's the, the fly with the propeller on it. Oh, oh yeah. That. I know the one you mean. <laughs> yep. Wasn't that Phil Coda? <laughs> no, I deny. I deny. <laughs> Another reputation shot to heck. <laughs> I've used salmon eggs, but not. I've never used a pistol beat. <laughs> yeah, it's well, amazing how how well flies do. And the first time I had people wanting to throw rocks at me is I was down here by the dam at Woods Canyon. 
uh, I was floating on a uh, float tube and I was throwing all of woolly buggers and I was catching, if I didn't catch one, I get two hits on that woolly bugger. And, uh, I was catching fish like crazy. The guys along the shore, before I went out, I asked them how they were doing. They were getting like one fish an hour. And when I was just beyond them being able to throw rocks at me, I caught fish like crazy out here on flies. <laughs> it's nice when that happens, isn't it? Oh, it is. Yep. I was over at uh, um, Black Canyon one time. Uh, last time I was there, and I was floating back towards the dock, and uh, give me that picture. Here we are. And here. I was coming down this shoreline, and I had probably 20 hits that I couldn't land. And I'm thinking, there's something wrong here. So I pulled in my fly, and the darn tip it had gotten wrapped around the hook. And I'm pulling that fly backwards, and the fish were still hitting it. So Jeez. even a backwards woolly bugger catches a fish once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know because I get a lot of those backwards woolly buggers. <laughs> uh, Keep throwing it, Rich. You'll catch one. That's soon. it. That's all I can do. <laughs> I'm not proud. I'll throw them backwards. <laughs> Yeah. All right, There's Bill, a... this was great. Thank you. Did oh, you're welcome. Job. Round of applause. Uh, yeah, thanks, Billy. You Bill, betcha. Bill, can you, can you hear me okay? Yeah. There was one question in the chat that came up that I don't know if we referenced. Um, Gerald asked if he could take his scooter down any of these trails. Just wanted to make sure that that was answered. You know, if, if you do, I'd have an assistant with you to make it, you get around some of the corners and around some of the rocks. You do, you would not want to do that alone. Nope. No, but that Bear Canyon trail, uh, yeah. I think they could handle it on Bear Canyon. I, I, uh, but very slow, very yeah. slowly. Yeah. Uh, the places where there are parking lots that are just adjacent to the water, especially if they're expecting a lot of boat traffic, uh, will be paved generally to some degree. And you can at least fish off the sides of where the boat docks are and the launch yeah. areas in most cases. Um, that would be the best bet. Bill, yeah, any, even, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Bill, go ahead. is there any reason why they have not constructed a campground at, uh, at Willow Springs? That that's uh, looks like I waited for years for that to happen. I can't answer that. Um, I know Game and Fish has, has turned a lot of the operations over to the Forest Service. Um, and they're, they built them. They, got, they had special funding back in the 50s that they could build these lakes. And <clears throat> I'm glad they had the funds to do it then. Uh, all of, they're not all um, just snow fed. A couple, couple of the lakes actually have springs that feed them. Uh, I think uh, Chevlon is one. Um, but, you know, it's, it's Tonto National, or I'm sorry, Sitgraves uh, National Forest um, probably are just trying to keep everything as pristine as they can and keep people into the existing campgrounds. Um, some of the areas around these lakes can be very inaccessible to fight a fire, too. And I think that may be part of their concerns about getting extra people in there. But that's just a wild guess on my part. Um, yeah, when when they were talking about uh, paved areas here at Willow Springs by the, the uh, boat launch, there's actually a paved path that goes up a ways here. And there's uh, uh, gazebos or whatever you want to call them mm -hmm. uh, with with cement picnic tables. Um, and right, he right here, right in this cove is where I saw my first ever uh, tiger trout caught and right in there is where I did the, the spinal uh, damage people who are all in wheelchairs and you can fish right here um, it's like uh, flagstone going down to the water's edge um, 
but you know you, you have trees everywhere on these lakes too so you have to watch your your roll cast is about the way to go on most of this stuff hey bill yeah i know they do they not have a campground when you come in off of that road going towards the willow spring to that boat ramp area as soon as you come in not too far down the road on the left hand side there used to be a campground in there. It was, it was one of those paid ones and stuff, but they used to have one. I, because I know when I first moved back here in 2010, I think it's about 2011, 2012. I actually camped there hmm. one one year. Yes, that's still open. Okay, that is open. Okay. Yeah, I, I've seen it open. I've never camped there, but right when you could turn off 260 within the first mile. Yes. Or half mile or so. There's a campground on the left hand side. Yeah, it's one of those improved where you gotta pay a certain a small fee and stuff and Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Phil, would that be where those uh two circles are that have the, the link between them on the photo? That could be. They look uh, like uh, yeah. yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it. Okay. Yep. I don't know what the name of it is, but I, I, I've i never camped there, but uh, I usually go over by Woods Canyon. Mm. Yeah. One of the other issues with uh, the campgrounds is uh, getting permits for the pit toilets. Because, mm. you know, they, the EPA has changed the regulations on that. Um, you know, it's that a lot of the pit toilets will be a good distance from the lake. Yeah. That's part of the new EPA regulations. Yeah, there are no no flush toilets up there. No. <laughs> Not unless you bring your own. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Brag, brag, brag. <laughs> Here's the aspens you were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Both That's sides. The that's the spot that Jack caught that nice big trout in. Yeah. And that's Bear Canyon, right? Yeah. yeah and it's, it, yep. it's not suggested to bring a flow tube in there. Um, uh, he always suggested just, just bring your waders in there. It's a lot of this shoreline is very productive for fish uh, wading. Not hmm. not all the lakes are real productive wading. Uh, some some of the bays you can get back into on Woods Canyon, uh, you can get out and wade. Uh, I but <clears throat> as you can see here, there are old tree stumps that have been there for fifty years, and uh, some of them are underwater. You don't see until you trip on them. So just be real careful wading in there. Yeah. Okay. All right. And if you like crawdads, there's a lot of crawdads up in there. Bring a trap and have yourself some uh, hors d'oeuvres of crawdads. Yeah. Nothing I wrong with that. Bear Canyon is that spot right there. It's one of the most beautiful spots I've ever been to. Yeah. That's what, this is the one Jack really preferred. Hmm. He, he always called it one of the prettiest places he ever been. Mm -hmm. And when you can get in there and you have the fall colors like this, wow. Nice. Uh -huh. Hard to beat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we live in a desert, guys, so you know, let me make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anybody, Ed. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. And the point up here, too, was, you know, don't necessarily follow the only signs you see. To get into Chevron, there's there's other ways to get in there, and uh, there's your ticket right about there. There's a road that goes back in that takes you to the lower end where the fish are, but that's one where you need to bring a float tube. Yep. Good. Okay, well, I'm gonna, who takes up the challenge? I'm going to unshare my screen. All, All right. right.
Thanks, Billy. Did a great job. Oh, you're welcome. I wish we had more time to play with this stuff. Yep. Thank you. Hi, Debbie. Go ahead. All right. Very good. Uh, anybody else got questions or comments? I will say that the uh, campground at the uh, Willow Springs is sinkhole. That's right. Okay. Uh, uh, yep. Okay. Good. Thank you. You'll really believe that name when you uh, camp there and a big uh, gully washer comes in the night. <laughs> the picnic table at my son and I's campsite there one time, just remembered about, was underwater. Uh, uh. Oh, jeez. Not fun. Nope. What flies are good for Monday? Say again? What flies are good for Monday at Green Valley? Green Valley. I was catching, well, <clears throat> the flight that I had tied on for Rich, he was catching those 30-inch uh, sunfish on. Uh, <laughs> that fly. <laughs> that, that and uh, I liked the PTO up there. That worked really well, of, of the uh, pheasant tail uh, ostrich. Uh, but it had to be about a size 14 or 16. Um, I also caught fish up there on the uh, um, green weenie. So there's a lot of flies at work in the Green Valley lakes. Uh, okay. But a copper john, a small size copper john should work really well. Um, and then some of my, my junk flies, the ones I tie like the Expo fly, they work pretty good too. I call right. them junk well, flies because well, nobody else ties them. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys Monday. All right, sounds good. You have a great week. Yes, Jerry. Very good, signing off. All right, folks, we'll see have you. Have a good one, soon. everybody. Thanks for coming. And uh, as I say, if you want to sign up, there's still a couple of spots open for Green Valley Lights on Monday. And I'll be sending out the uh, detail on that um, probably Thursday when I get home and uh, until then everybody stay safe I would uh, if I can yeah. I would suggest that uh, we meet by the park office there uh, there's nice improved bathrooms when you get up there um, right. by the by the floating dock and then the majority, you can spread out from there. The fish were both left and right, but where the boat, boat launch is on the far side down by the dam where uh, we were catching trout uh, a year and a half ago, that's where I caught most of the fish I caught. Oh, good. Okay. Did you try any of the, uh, the other two lakes that are there? Last I did. I, I had about a 15-inch trout went by and winked its eye at me on the uh, the, <laughs> the closest one. Did you wave nicely? Um, it said, hello, you know, goodbye. Uh -huh. But there are trout in all of the lakes. There's crappie in all the lakes and bass. Um, yeah, I, I fished on where the water goes underneath the road from the first lake you come to to the big lake. Mm -hmm. I was fishing by the, the fence line by the that where the water comes underneath. If you can get a side where it's cast up in there, that's where I caught two fish at the same time. Nice. Good. We'll have to try that again on Monday. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming. And uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Good night. All right. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.